soon to be our ex-governor of Basaki. Whether you like it or not, this election must hold and Labour Party must win. Our candidate, Olumide Akbata, is our next governor. Osadebe Avenu, Upper Seki, not be your father inheritance, not be your house. Leave death in Jesus' name. Leave in peace. I'm gonna watch how Peter will be and Olumide Akbata, Tito said I want to turn a do state now to London and see how Upper Seki not be crack on my side. Rubbish. The Edo State Governorship election campaign is taking a dangerous turn, especially from the outgoing governor of Edo State, Godwin Obaseki. He recently declared that the election is a do or die affair. This is an existential threat. This election is a do or die. Because if they do, we will die. Do we want to die? How desperate can Obaseki be? Ordinarily, this election, he's supposed to use the opportunity to showcase all he did during the past eight years. All his works are supposed to campaign for him. When he comes to a campaign rally, we simply tell the people, you see these so 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 things I did here, the one I built there, this is the right man to continue the works. After all, he's been part of my administration the past eight years. Yes, after all, he's the current governor. Spreading dangerous rhetoric is not the best for Edo people. All that he needs to do, if he's truly sure that PDP will win the governorship election, is to make sure they have all the party agents at different polling stations to guard their votes, to make sure that they protect the will of the people so that no one can rig the election. But instead, he's behaving as if he's desperate, he has something to hide. This is coming after he boldly told General Abu Salami Abubakar, the chairman of the peace committee, that PDP won't be signing any peace agreement because of some reasons he gave. From the developments and where we are today, I think my party met yesterday and we're not likely to sign this agreement. The person who is supposed to enforce peace, the peace accord, is now an active participant in creating a destructive We've had situations where, from the Inspector General's office, there are armed gangs of policemen who come, have come into a state to just invade, arrest, and take away the PDP members. As we speak, there are about 10 in detention in Abuja without trial. While this is a huge concern that the police is being used to intimidate and harass PDP members, they still need to turn down the rhetoric. APC members have also shown how desperate they are to win the governorship election in Edo State, whether by rigging or otherwise. Imagine they are using the official handle of the presidency on X to campaign for the APC in Edo State. This is a new law. This official handle represents Nigeria. It's supposed to be used for governance, not for campaigning for a party member just because APC are in control of the federal government. We are going to provide you with insecurity. Anyway, it's not only of Baseki that is spreading this dangerous rhetoric. Another PDP chieftain in another rally in Edo State threatened that Edo State will burn if they attempt to rig the election. How did he arrive at the fact that PDP will win here by 80%? What kind of data did he consult? Did they conduct any polling that proves that PDP must win here by 80%? No amount of polling and sampling of opinions of people can ever be 100% correct. The most correct polling is the election proper. So bragging and inciting people that Edo State will burn if they try to rig the election, this is no way of campaigning. He's just trying to get people prepared for violence instead of organizing their people to troop out in their numbers to vote.
PDP members are portraying themselves as being desperate. They are the party in power. They had all the time, the past eight years. Okay, let's even say four years because during Obaseki's first term, he was in APC. The past four years, they should have used that time to do the campaigning. That's how it works. In all the communities in Edo State, they would have executed projects that today would be doing the campaigning for them. This is reminiscent of when P2B was leaving power. He didn't have to do much. He was just telling the people that his successor, the person that he wants them to vote for, will continue from where he stopped. He did it in Anambra State and the people trooped out in their numbers and supported his candidate in the person of Obiano. Today, he's doing the same thing in Edo State. He's been here for several days campaigning hard for Lumida Mata and his deputy candidate. Will Edo people, Edo obedience, troop out in their numbers while the two big parties are fighting and take advantage and vote tactically? Yes. In your community, you already know the person that is likely to win because of how people talk, the opinion of different people in your community. So what you need to do is to rally more people. That's if you support Olumida Bata. Rally more people to make sure they come out and vote for him. Yes, the more numbers, the better. Because there are people who are not likely to vote. But adding one or two or three votes can increase the count. Now, coming to the people asking what they need to do to prevent rigging in their polling unit, all you need to do is to identify yourselves, even if you are only 10 or 15 in your polling unit. Once you identify each other, after casting your votes, you hang around in that group. You know you voted for Labour Party, so hang around together because the higher in numbers you are, the more powerful your voice. So you hang around the polling unit to make sure that all the votes are correctly counted and if they eventually decide to upload the results, you can take a photo of the results sheet. Of course, the party agent will do that, but at least make sure you people hang around there to give that support. <laughs> The Olumida Bata campaign train that landed in Ebuma yesterday night was actually because of the delay caused by the bad road leading to Ebuma. Whether the road is a federal road or state road, it shows that the governor failed in his duties. Maybe that's why he's sounding very desperate and spreading dangerous rhetoric so as to force people or intimidate them to vote them again. This is a serious failure. Whether a road is a federal road or not, at least do something even if it's ordinary palliative so as to make it motorable. After all, it is the economy of Edo State that is suffering. This applies everywhere, not just in Edo State. When P2B was the governor of Anambra State, he did the same on federal roads. He built them, expanded some to up to 10 lanes, especially the one at Opiweka. All my documents is gone. My original white certificate is gone because I'm not crying. Then they copy AI, then they move around. They tell us the election. Make, make, make a show them out. Can our Baseki children live in this place? Can our Baseki children live in this place? This is not a political campaign or anything. I do not support the PC or PDP or AP. I'm speaking as an average man. Follow me. So people should never be rewarding failures. Yes, it's because Nigerians don't know how to keep a grudge. That's why politicians ride on us. They don't care. Once they're in power, they behave anyhow they want and they will have the audacity to come back during a second term election and be telling you bold-faced lies. And for people still spreading the false narrative that Edo people loved and supported Obi for president, but they might not be bound to vote for the person he's supporting in Edo state governorship election. How do you explain this? You don't trust Obi's judgment, 
or how do you ensure that his votes are protected assuming he contests in 2027 if you don't have his ally in control of a do state government house remember the last time this same obaseki that's spreading dangerous rhetoric denied ubi a campaign ground yes initially he allowed him to use the stadium but at the last minute he withdrew the authorization and Obi was forced to use a smaller space. That was why the campaign spread out in the streets of Benin City. So whoever you will vote for come Saturday the 21st, make sure you don't vote against your own interests. That's the most important thing. Thanks for watching. Yeah.